Hello. Welcome back to another Pen Talk. Thank you very much for tuning in. Thank you very much for joining me on my channel as I explore the amazing, wonderful, intriguing, interesting wide world of pens. And you see rotating in front of you two Mahjong slash Moon Man. It's branded a number of different ways. P136. This pen has been reviewed by a few people and I've watched some of the reviews. And I like the pen. Let me put that up front right away. I think it's a groundbreaking pen. I think there's a lot of innovating features in this pen. Where those features originated is not my area that I will speculate in. I just enjoy the pen and I share my joy with you and hopefully I present the pen in a way that you can decide whether this is a pen that you would like to have in your hand and write with. So let's go on with the review. It's quite long. I go into a lot of side issues. I have a lot of nibs to look at. I just find myself really getting into detail when I review a pen and this is one of them. So hopefully grab a beverage, sit back and enjoy the video. See a nice box in front of you. This is an order I placed a while ago and I did a video about the order that I placed and it just took a while for this to show up. One of the delays was there was a question from the seller because I ordered a fine nib and they didn't have a fine nib in this color and it took me a while to see the message. AliExpress has some new messaging system and they used to send me alerts when I got a message to read but they don't do it anymore, so you have to go in and look at your messages regularly. And of course, I didn't do that. But now I will be a little bit better at that. So what pen is this? We'll flip it over and we'll see. It's a P136. We'll give you some translations there. It's just a nice cardboard box. I like the design. And you know, there's one of their sayings. Design. <laughs> Made in China. Writing instruments, in case you didn't know what was in the box. The lid just comes off. And we see, wow, two extra nibs that I ordered. And these are branded Moon Man. You got a 1.1 and a medium. That's great. So now I have an extra fine, fine, medium, and 1.1. Of course, I ordered a wrench. I would order wrenches, tools, whenever I order a pen, if they're available. This manual that we've seen a couple times now from... Mahjong and we see the pen and it's in a nice cardboard cutout and there's another um, Mahjong uh, statement feel the temperature of writing they've been using that for a long time and when they had Moon Man they also used it not exactly certain what it means so here's the pen it's secured nice plastic sleeve and we see the pen now this pen comes in a number of different colors, but I really wanted a red one. And I now have two of them, and we'll discuss that a little bit later. Feels good in the hand. Plastic has just a nice feel to it. Precious resin, injection molded plastic. The cap comes off in ah, about one turn, and we'll see a nice size nib I'd say it's a number six, and it's branded Moon Man. There have been really interesting challenges with their branding. So there's the P136, and of course Moon Man, and Moon Man, in case you didn't catch it the first time. So that's the pen. I wouldn't call it light or heavy, it's right in that sweet spot. And it fits nicely in the hand. It feels good in the hand. You can hold it anywhere. And there's someone who said it doesn't post. So let's see. Yep, it will not post. It'll sit there. I mean, you can write with it and post with it, but it falls off. So who knows why that design is. You know, maybe they put a plastic liner in here that would facilitate posting a little bit better or change dimensions a little bit, but... I think on the barrel they were certainly limited based on that piston being there, so you need a kind of straight 
barrel for most of the distance. So we're going to explore this pen, explore the nibs, and talk a little bit about the design. Show you how the pen comes apart, which I think is an interesting look. So when I saw they had spare nibs, I certainly wanted some. And I'm amazed that Moonman is now coming out with a variety of nibs. And they're well packaged in these tubes that are generally used for ink samples. We pull it out. Again, it's very well packaged, as I mentioned. And this is just going to be an easy nib assembly to put in and out. And it's branded. And it's a stub. This is the first number six Moonman branded stub I've ever seen. It needs to be adjusted a little bit. So I'm going to be interested to see how these work in the pen. I certainly like the fact that these are available. At least on AliExpress. I haven't seen them other places. You know, and here's the second one that I got. Which is a medium. I've enjoyed the mediums from Jin Hao. Kaigalu and Hong Dion. So let's see how these work. I like the two O-rings. I mean, this is a good indication of how well this pen is put together. Nice big opening there where the ink can come in to the feed and to the nib. So the other thing to notice is pricing has changed. The pen on AliExpress has dropped a few dollars and they've removed the box. So I'm happy to get a box because I, I like the box and I keep all of my boxes. Uh, Easy Buy on Etsy was always without a box, but the wrench was a lot less. And the wrench price has dropped also on AliExpress. So this is a pen that I think has been very popular. They sell out a lot. Occasionally you can find a medium nib in one of these pens, but you have to look around to be able to find that. I found a black one. And Luster is the only one I think selling the extra nibs, so there's a, a definitely one source of supply for that now. Who knows what will happen in the future. But this is an interesting pen. I think it's a groundbreaking pen. I think it is uh, opened up a whole new level for Mahjong slash Moon Man. Here is the P136 disassembled and I used this excellent wrench. The larger end works on unscrewing the piston and the smaller end works for unscrewing the nib assembly. That nib assembly has two little cutouts there and the wrench fits into that cutout. Takes a little bit of uh, focus and it takes many, many turns. You can see all those threads at the bottom to get it out, but it's great because now I can replace it. And my replacement nibs also come with an assembly. Plus I bought some extra assemblies so I can use other nibs. This will become a pen of many nibs. And this design is similar to vintage and we'll look at that a little bit later. The other thing that's amazing, and here's that loose ring. Yeah, you can see where it might not be totally centered, which Doodlebud found out. But I've never seen a piston designed like this one. It's definitely nice silicone there, but you would expect this piston to pull up the ink to be at this end, not at this end. Don't know why they designed it. But I love the fact that it's brass. You can see those cutouts that you can fit that wrench into. So that's 
makes it a good pen. And if you think about another pen that's a good piston filler, Pelican, they use brass on their M800 and M1000, but not on their lower end models. The plastic is well put together. Uh, the injection molding is great. This is all one piece, which to me saves some money in manufacturing, but also makes a lot of integrity. And you don't really need that section to come off. You can unscrew the nib assembly or unscrew the piston if you need to do a thorough cleaning. I think we just need to do a little bit of LED x-ray work. Yes, we're in a little a bit of a dark mode. I lowered the blinds, but we still got nice full intense sun coming in. And that is a very nice burgundy color. And if we go inside, we'll see how that end is a little thinner. And it's, they tapered that down so it fits uh, closer against the barrel when you have it capped. But as you go into the pen, there's no light coming through because it's a thicker resin there. Injection molded. And if we look at the barrel, we'll just see how nice that ink window is. And if we look inside, we'll see just a straight barrel. You know, there's a few threads there for the piston assembly. The piston should work well. We need to take a look inside the cap. And we'll see at the very bottom a nice brass screw. just has a slot in it. So that holds in the top finial and the clip. And it's brass, so it shouldn't have any corrosion. Hopefully it seals up nice and airtight and that nib stays wet. I bought two extra nib assemblies. And getting this feed out required a little bit of effort. I had to push it out using my knockout block. But it's certainly a interesting designed feed. Lots of fins. A fairly big channel moving down there to the end where the nib would be. And I also got another nib to try out. This is a number six ground nib. You know, it's uh, full in. And we have a nice calligraphy grind there. So there's a lot of nibs now I could put into my P136. And I can just have them in these nib assemblies. Screw in, screw out. So we're going to take a look inside this nib assembly just to see if there's any orientation. And it appears to be totally round, so when you insert the nib, you can put it in however you'd like. So here's that calligraphy nib that's going to be seated as close as I can get it to the end. And then we're going to come in. I like to have those cutouts be on the side. Hmm, that's interesting. Off camera. So it took some effort to even try to get this to fit. So my feeling is that this design is for a much thinner nib than this is that would fit in there. As you can see, I would have to do some heat setting of that feed. And it's not all the way in. It should be flush here at the end of the nib collar. So it's going to take a little bit of experimentation. So this nib we're not going to see writing in the near future. So when the other nib didn't fit well, I did more explorations, watched more videos, and Doodlebud had pulled the nib out of his P136 and noticed these cutouts. And also there's that little notch at the end of the nib. And then when I looked at some of the listings for this pen, I saw diagrams that showed how this nib is designed specifically to fit onto this feed. And it fits in one spot. And there's little protuberances on the feed that fit into those slots. There's a little notch there that fits into a piece on the feed. So you just can't put any nib in here, unfortunately. So in doing my research, I found that they make a Bach Yovo version of this feed. And they also have a feed assembled with a regular 35 millimeter nib and not the special P136 nib. So they're on the way to me and there may be another video when I do that. So you could pull that nib and feed out but the way that's designed I use this knockout block. 
very easy to punch it out. And the challenge that I found is the fins on this feed are very fragile, like they are on some of the Pen BBS feeds. So in my first P136, those fins I had bent, I had done a lot of work on the nib assembly. And so this tool is great. Let you investigate this pen, look at its different features. And I'm impressed with the amount of detail, attention to detail, engineering that's gone into this pen. Whether it's based on a Mont Blanc 146 or not, to me doesn't matter. I spent a number of years in uh, high-end, high-volume retail. And trust me, marketing, design, and I was in product development, so I dealt with manufacturing. Making any product like this, very complex, not a simple thing to do, regardless of where the design comes from, either internally developed or one that you've been asked by marketing to resemble. So that's the situation, and I just look at a pen for what it is. Do I like it or not? And so far, this pen has me very intrigued, and I do like it. I'm going to swap in the nibs, the 1.1 and the medium. So anytime I have a nib assembly like this with O-rings and threads on it, I just put a slight bit of silicone grease on the threads and on those O-rings, prolong those life, and also I've occasionally had these nib assemblies that be difficult to unscrew when they've been in for a long time. Silicone grease will facilitate an easy removal in the distant future. So I replace the extra fine and fine with the medium and a 1.1. And when I unscrewed the nib assemblies that were in the pen, I just put them into this beaker of water just to let them soak a little bit before I flush them. And this wrench does work well because those uh, nib assemblies were tightened down pretty well. So once you get them unloosened, you can unscrew the rest of them by hand. And yeah, I did get a little ink on me, but not much. I didn't wear any gloves. So I'm going to let these uh, settle in for a little bit and then show you how they write. This medium nib is great. It is very, very smooth. And you get a little bit of pencil-like feedback, which is fine with me. So considering the extra fine and fine were both very fine nibs, and I mean fine in line width, this medium is just perfect. A little bit of line variation between horizontal and vertical, they're not soft, so pressure doesn't really do much. You get a little bit more ink flow. But this makes this pen extra, extra good. Let's look at the 1.1. This is also nice and wet and smooth. It's just that it's not exactly like I'm familiar with. I mean, those horizontal lines are definitely thin, and the vertical lines are definitely wider, but it's not as wide as it should be. 1.1 means that that should be a 1.1 millimeter line, and it's more closer to like a 0.9 or whatever, but it feels good. And it does give you some nice line variation in your writing. I think this is a nib that's going to take some time to get used to, but I certainly like it. And it certainly adds again to the appeal of this P136 when you have a lot of different nibs to write with. So I can't get away with this review without rating the pens and considering all the nib options that you have and everything else, I'm going to give it a 9.8. 
So it gets one check for being very well made, works very well. It gets two checks for having a great variety of excellent nibs to go with it. Why is it in a 10? It just misses a little bit. You know, it, it's not exactly a 10 in my view of what a 10 pen should be like. But it is certainly a good pen and one worthy of your review and interest. So now we're going to show you some dimensions. Hopefully you've already seen the dimensions of this pen many, many times. But here's my view of the dimensions. I did the writing. I'm going to do a final summation and thank all of you for watching. But meanwhile, these pens have stories behind them because I ordered one on AliExpress from Lustor and it took a long time to arrive, almost two months. This one I ordered on Etsy from Easy Buy and it arrived in a little over a week. This pen was a little bit more expensive, but the brass wrench was less expensive, so total cost was comparable. This one came with a box from Lustor, but now the box seems to be uh, hard to get a hold of, or at least not everybody's offering it, and the price has dropped a little bit. Moonman Mahjong did an excellent job in coming up with a piston fill pen, classic looks, classic design, and giving us right out of the gate a bunch of nibs that we can use in the pen. I think it'd be great if those nibs were offered when you buy the pen versus having to get them separately, especially the 1.1. And if the producer of the pen would sell the pen without nibs and then sell the nib separately and allow the sellers to insert the nib of the buyer's choice, then that would be one way of minimizing the amount of inventory units and giving flexibility to the seller. And you could also then gauge on what nibs are more popular. To me, the medium should be one choice that is easy one to make, especially if you like a medium. The fine and extra fines are definitely a fine line. So therefore, you got those choices, and the medium's not available in all of the different colors and variations. And the 1.1 stub is only available if you order it as a separate nib unit, but the price is around 10 US dollars, so it, it's not a large amount of money to get a very interesting nib to put into the pen. And hopefully when I get the other uh, nib collars, which work with Yovo and Bach and standard nibs, I'll be able to put a calligraphy nib in this and that would make it even more exciting. So we're gonna come to the end. Long review, I had a lot of stuff to cover. There's a lot of stuff I left out, but you know, maybe there'll be another review when I get some more of those nib units. So thank all of you very much for watching. I hope this video finds everyone safe, healthy, and happy, enjoying your pens, enjoying your life, enjoying every day, just having fun. And that's what pens to me are great because I have fun with my pens and hopefully you do too. This is the end of the video and we're going to say bye-bye. See you soon.